Hello, I'm Trevor Green, the proud superintendent of the Yakima School District, and with me today, I have Executive Director Nancy Smith. Uh, Director Smith, could you, uh, Executive Director Smith, could you tell us uh, your role here in our district? Absolutely, thank you, Dr. Green. Um, I am the new Executive Director for Special Education, overseeing all of our special ed programs, the services our students need, and any additional services we get from contract agencies. And I believe that, you know, we are known by the way that we treat the least capable of our society. And so it's so important to have you in this role. Uh, we know that uh, we have to better support uh, all uh, our, our students that receive special services. And for that reason, when we look at our legislative priorities, our number one priority this year is to fully fund uh, special education. We know that Superintendent Reichdahl at OSPI, our state superintendent of public instruction, is focused on this and has put a request forth uh, to the legislature uh, to the tune of about $971 million. Uh, to put this in perspective, uh, uh, Executive Director Smith, could you tell us about uh, what it looks like in our, in our district with regard to the funding of special education services? Absolutely. So in the last year, we spent a little over $10 million and received right at $3 million from the state. So we're short about a $7 million fee. With that being said, I'm very, very appreciative to the fact that our district is large enough to help supplement what we receive for that funding because it is very important to meet the needs of students. But I do believe that we need more funding from the state to help uh, support and make sure we have all the programs we need to meet the needs of students. Yeah, and, we, and not just you, we know that uh, that is a push from uh, the state associations as well uh, because it is uh, so underfunded at this point. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to share with respect to uh, special education services and uh, the need for fully funding? Well, I just am very proud of the programs we're able to offer in a district this size, and I want to continue to grow those programs and continue to ensure we're meeting the diverse needs of all of our students because we have a large population of children that need, but we want to continue to provide the very best services we possibly can, and that will require funding. Wonderful. Thank you. And uh, just a reminder for those that are not aware, uh, when we don't have uh, uh, fully funding in special education, it means that we are taking funding out of basic education, and that is uh, funding that could go in other areas to greater serve, uh, provide supports, wraparound services, and other uh, for other students as well. So it is uh, really a, a, a wonderful uh, focus, uh, this legislative priority. I look forward to sharing you uh, with you the other two priorities. I'm now here with Dr. Darling, our Deputy Superintendent, and we're going to talk a little bit about funding K-12 capital facilities. Uh, here in the Yakima School District, uh, we know that we've been the beneficiary of passing a bond on the third uh, occasion to uh, replace Davis High School or replace Eisenhower High School and actually upgrade and put an addition onto Davis High School, which is fantastic and we're so grateful to, uh, to the community. But we also recognize that as we have moved forward, there's a greater need for uh, support uh, through the legislature. So Dr. Darling, could you tell us a little bit about this uh, focus on support of K-12 capital facilities. Absolutely, so right now we have a district, we have a community advisory committee that um, Superintendent Green asked that I put together. And their sole purpose right now is to look into our needs for our districts. Um, what are our highest school, our highest needs for our schools? And we have some schools that were built in the 1940s and 1950s. Yeah. Uh, they, they, not only do they need significant renovations, but they need to be completely torn down because yeah. the learning environment that existed back then is much different than our needs now. Also, we don't have very we have very few facilities in our district that have ADA compliant playgrounds. Mm -hmm. So we have some of our kiddos with our highest needs, as you referenced earlier with with Executive Director uh, Nancy um, Smith, that we have students who have to go out in the playgrounds and just sit there and watch their peers play, which is completely unacceptable any longer. It's a challenge because we know that the way the legislation currently is written is it's difficult for for school districts like the Yakima district to get the most we can out of our out of our tax out of our tax funding and so the better supported we are through legislative efforts the better we will we'll be able to meet the needs of all of our students mm -hmm. especially as we know that um, the bond that we passed in 2009 that you referenced that was a long time ago and prices have gone up significantly now for construction rates and, and such and so we have them even even higher hills to climb now yeah absolutely so uh, for this reason we, we know that there's so many needs out there in education but for us here in the Yakima School District, we do uh, take as one of our main focal points uh, the support of K-12 uh, capital facilities, knowing that we can maximize the opportunity of having funding through the legislature 
if they would uh, allocate differently and support uh, districts uh, that have the extreme challenges uh, that we have in the Yakima area. So I'm now here to talk about our third legislative priority, but first I would like to uh, uh, give some time here to the man to my right to introduce himself. Uh, would you please? Uh, I'm Jacob Cooper, the Executive Director of Finance for Yakima School District. Thank, thank you, Superintendent. Thank you. Thank you for being here. And our, our third priority uh, is to focus on the investment of uh, learning recovery. Uh, we know that because of the influx of one-time funds coming from the federal government, of which Yakima received a substantial amount, uh, we were able to invest that appropriately. And one such example would be around curriculum adoption. Could you tell us how that's expedited the process? Yes. Um, historically, districts will adopt a new curriculum, I would say, between uh, eight and 10 years of age. So that um, curriculum adoption that um, your child may get in second grade would be in use all the way till they're a senior, not the same curriculum, but you see that there's a long decade span. What we're able to do with the one-time federal money is to um, put forward um, a series of large curricular adoptions that are uh, either in process or about to be completed. And those will give our teachers new materials in hand to hopefully combat uh, learning loss provided, uh, created by the pandemic. And, and speaking of learning loss, we've also taken the, that federal funding, uh, again, one-time resource, and invested in uh, learning recovery. And that learning recovery has taken the form of uh, addressing summer slide or the, the break period of which students may take a step back. Could you talk a little bit about uh, summer and intercession? Uh, you bet, Superintendent. I think what um, what we all realized during the pandemic was that the time, of course, time is very important, but when we lose time with our students in the classroom with that uh, amazing educator in front of them, we are doing whatever we can to try to make up that time. It is not going to be perfect, but we are offering students uh, additional summer learning opportunities something the Yakima School District calls an intercession, which is time in between breaks. Mm -hmm. So um, that money has allowed us to pay our staff uh, additionally to be able to work with kids uh, outside of the normal school day and hopefully uh, continue to have them have gains in student achievement. Thank you. And then uh, some additional opportunities that we've uh, pursued were to assure uh, greater safety and security for our students and social emotional supports, uh, as well as uh, counseling supports and uh, other investments uh, although we tried uh, and succeeded in keeping those away from uh, uh, funding personnel, as we know that that is an expiration as far as, uh, and we didn't want to have to uh, reduce staff uh, after the expiration of the one-time federal funding. So as a result of all of this, our focus then becomes in talking to the legislature along with the other two priorities, investing in this learning recovery, making sure that it's long range sustainable because this one-term funding is not sustainable. So for this reason, we're investing uh, our time and resources around legislative priorities to convincing our legislators that we do need uh, funding beyond this year. Uh, 